Hi guys, how are you doing? I hope you're doing fantastic. Uh, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Uh, my name is Claire Tonui. On this episode, I will be discussing a topic that's a matter of national and global concern, that is, the cost of inefficiency and inflation, uh, how it works and the bearers of this cost. Subflation and food inflation is well over double digits now compared to a few years ago. Inflation is the most misunderstood thing in the world. I have decided to record this topic so that I can shed light on how inflation really works and get to debunk some of the common myths surrounding it. It is important to understand what is driving inflation uh, so that you can be able to make informed decisions about your finances going forward. Uh, recently, I've had people actually believe in myths such as uh, that oil prices are the cause of inflation, there is inflation because there is no money, that when inflation goes down, it means that the prices of commodities will go down. They believe that high prices are the actual cause of inflation, among many other things that I won't be able to list them now. Inflation occurs or happens when the prices of goods and services increase over a long period of time. Uh, this causes your purchasing power or the amount of goods and services you can buy with a single unit of currency to decrease. Uh, that's why you find that um, your money may not be able to buy as much today as it did in the past. It's important to understand that inflation is not the same as a price increase for a single good or service. Rather, uh, inflation involves simultaneous and continued price increase uh, of many things that you buy regularly. So it's not just your grocery bill. Uh, you'll see the cost of gas, uh, utilities, travel and other expenses rise as well. Inflation, just like acceleration, is a rate. Uh, the best definition for inflation is the rate at which prices for goods and services rise. Uh, it shows us the acceleration in price increase of goods and services. Uh, one thing that uh, people need to understand also is that inflation either speeds up or slows down. It doesn't decelerate as a whole or decelerate for prices to reach previous historic lows. No, it never gets to that point. Uh, more often, um, uh, people get comfortable when they hear such statements as uh, inflation is coming down or uh, inflation is slowing down. These people become relieved with an expectation that the prices for goods and services will come down. No, that's not the case. This is a complete myth that they have to, uh, that they have believed in and uh, it needs to be debunked. Well, it's a relief for sure as the rate of inflation is slowing down. But it is not a relief for the expectation that prices will come down. Just because inflation is coming down, it doesn't mean that the prices are going to come down. It simply means that the prices will rise at a slower pace. Uh, for prices to fall, inflation percentage shall be negative and a developing economy is only a hypothetical possibility, not a possible reality that we might see in the near future. Uh, once the prices of commodities go up, they mostly stay there. On the myth that oil prices are to blame for inflation, uh, people need to debunk this myth and understand that the rise in oil prices contribute to inflation but are not the singular cause. Many things contribute to inflation. For example, uh, during COVID, the oil demand dropped since people weren't traveling. After COVID, people got back to it and the demand for oil increased. The war in Ukraine brought about disruptions in the supply chain amidst the high demand, therefore contributing to the high fuel prices. High inflation is often the result of the money supply growing too big relative to the size of an economy. This means that there is more money in the economy than the staff to spend it on. This makes the unit value of the currency to diminish, hence the purchasing power falls and prices rise. Uh, let me give a relatable example on that. Uh, when COVID hit countries in 2020, most countries were providing money to its citizens. Banks were giving out loans at low interest rates uh, so that people could be able to spend the money in catering for their basic needs. Business owners were able to keep their businesses running. Uh, we were all tensed and went buying things in bulk, uh, thinking that COVID might get worse and we might not be able to go out anytime soon. The demands for goods and services went high to a point that it outweighed the supply. Business owners and industries decided to raise the prices of goods and services so that they could meet these demands. That's where inflation came in. Uh, I hope that example debunks the myth that high inflation is as a result of less or no money in the economy. Also, back to the myth that higher prices are the actual cause of inflation, 
This myth needs to be debunked because the higher prices is a symptom of inflation and not the cause. Commodity prices are rising due to a variety of reasons like strong demand, uh, lots of liquid cash, wars that have led to the disruption of the supply chain, among many other reasons. Uh, with more inefficiency comes more inflation. We always end up paying for it. Yes, as the citizens. It is crucial for policymakers to address inefficiencies in spending and prioritize measures that will help to control inflation. They should maximize on productivity or uh, make the best use of time and resources. Uh, when inflation is driven by a country's domestic development, uh, policymakers often come up with policies aimed at reducing the inflation. Central banks can either raise the interest rates or try to fix the exchange rate so that they can get the value of their currency back. Uh, when inflation is driven by global developments, sometimes the policymakers have no control on how it's going to affect their country's prices. Sometimes the government in turn decides to set prices of commodities. Uh, for example, uh, recently President William Ruta ordered that some specific brands of flour uh, should sell at a specific price. Uh, the government usually provides subsidies or reduction in taxes to such producers so that they can not go at a loss. Uh, that's why you, you found that the price of unga was supposed to sell at, it used to sell at 250 and some specific brands were told to reduce it to, to actually 159 shillings yeah when policymakers implement inefficient decisions the citizens suffer stagflation bearing all the costs of inefficiencies and inflation low-income households suffer the most Inflation can sometimes get out of hand and money becomes worthless. That's why you find in some countries you have to carry a lot of cash to buy something. Yet in some countries you just need a note, one note to buy many things. And in some countries you need a lot of notes to buy something. This is because the prices are too high and much cash is needed to buy something as there is a lot of excess money in the economy. But this rarely happens though. Uh, I will leave my discussion at that. I hope you got a glimpse of, on how the cost of inefficiencies and inflation work and who bears its risks. Thanks for watching. Remember to comment, share, like and subscribe. Bye.